Welcome, uh, everyone, to the first I Work in Sports live interview. Um, so this is the first time we're trying to, to do that. I hope it works out well. Thank you to everyone that is joining. You can also uh, watch it later. Well, uh, people have been asking me, you know, what's the current state of the job market uh, nowadays? Uh, in the world, right? So what's the best way to get um, a job? And uh, I decided to actually ask experts to share their knowledge with you. And there, hence, we created this uh, new series. Let's see how that goes. Uh, today, I have with me Joris Lacroix. He is from SRI, that's formerly known as Sports Recruitment International. And uh, we will hear from him right after this right joris welcome to this uh, first episode first show uh, I work in sports live uh, interview and uh, so let's start talking about uh, what is actually SRI and what you do there in in the company yeah hey George thanks uh, thanks for for having me on so uh, SRI we're an executive uh, recruitment firm so we work across uh, sports media and entertainment um, we work on a, on a mandate basis uh, across various uh, sort of senior executive roles down to uh, to, to management level. Uh, so our headquarters are actually over in uh, in in the UK. I'm I'm based in Switzerland, uh, and then we've got offices sort of globally located across Singapore, China, uh, the US. Uh, we've also got uh, an entity in uh, in Germany, and then two offices in Australia. Um, we divide ourselves by sector. Uh, so we'll cover anything that sort of encompasses that that sports media entertainment entertainment space. So the the core sports area, which is tends to be an area that I focus on, uh, but we've also got you know lifestyle, fashion, sporting good brands. Uh, we've got broadcasting and media services. We've got uh, performance, esports. Uh, we've got an esports specific division. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so they, our clients will mandate us to go to market. So exclusively, uh, to find the best talent on a, on a specific role. So we're not, uh, marketing CVs out or, or doing high frequency recruitment by any means. It's very tailor made, very quality oriented, uh, recruitment on specific mandates. And you specifically, your, will you call yourself a headhunter or, um, Sure. Specifically, yeah. What's so as, specifically in the company, yeah. Um, as as a senior consultant, my, my role is sort of two prompt. So I will um, go to clients and potential clients to to represent our services and uh, and and show our added value to them. Uh, that's that's a small part of my job, and then I'm also very much on the delivery of the assignments. So that's sort of managing. The, the recruitment process from A to Z. So that's, you know, developing the job description with, with line management, uh, all the way to the, the closing of the contract and, and ensuring that, uh, that the candidate is able to relocate if need be and, and really help throughout the negotiation. So that stage will look like, uh, making the job description, uh, taking a very detailed hiring brief with, uh, with, with line management as well as with HR. Uh, and then identifying target companies where we're going to hunt from, establishing timelines of how long the recruitment process is going to uh, take, uh, and then offering up initial identity reports to show the, the type of candidates that we believe to be suitable for the position, and then constructing a, a short list and just making sure that we've got a transparent process with, uh, with our clients. And then, of course, it's doing the interviews are, as are necessary. So we're really trying to do 80% of the recruitment work for them and for them to just get involved at the end to make sure that, uh, that the person is, is what they're looking for. All right. So take into account then the mandates uh, that you have, the, the work that you do. 
you will have a very good idea of what is the current state of the job market uh, in the end uh, at the moment, right? Uh, we, I think people would like to know if uh, it's completely frozen. We know that everybody probably is maybe letting more people go than actually hiring. But uh, what is actually the uh, current situation? Yeah. So, I mean, before diving into it, I just want a big disclaimer out there. I, I'm, not, I'm not an oracle, so I, I can only speak to sort of what I see in the conversations I'm having. So I don't, uh, I don't want to claim that, um, that my word is gospel on this. This is just my best, um, my best evaluation on, on, on things as they stand. Um, as far as just to react to, to one of the things you mentioned, as far as letting people go versus hiring them, I can't, I can't say uh, that that there are some massive layoffs that are going on or anything like that. That's that's not been my finding. I think a lot of organizations are sort of asking themselves what's the best way to move forward. And I, and I would say actually uh, on a more positive note, the the, the main uh, feedback that I'm getting is employers just doing their best to to keep things uh, to keep things steady. Uh, and to keep their workforce and, and to make sure that, that people are being looked after. And I think that's that's been a real positive that I found through these conversations. Now, on the hiring front, for sure, um, one of the first things that, that tends to, 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 to happen in, in cases like this is, uh, is, is a hiring freeze. Um, I can't, not all of our mandates, for example, have, have, have been frozen or anything like that. We, we still have plenty of work that, that is on and, and plenty of organizations that are still going forward with recruitment, whether I would say where there were needs that were identified before, before this, uh, before this pandemic, um, some of them will have gone forward with them because there were critical needs that, that they had for these organizations and they understand that, you know, this is a passing moment and, and these, these needs are still there, but maybe on some of the more, uh, let's say operational, uh, positions that, that probably will have, uh, will have been frozen for, for the time being. So it's not a booming market for sure in terms of, uh, of looking for work, but, but it's not, you know, it's it's not a case where it's uh, it's all doom and gloom either. I don't believe. Right. So I understand that uh, is, there are some opportunities out there. Would you happen to know where people should maybe looking at at, at the moment? I mean, for, from my perspective, I, I can't point to an industry where I would say yes, they're they're hiring. Go there, go there, because there I, I don't believe there's necessarily. Uh, one uh, that, that that would stand out. My advice, and to be honest, it tends to be the same, is just, you know, network as much as possible. Now, pe firstly, it's a great time to check in with people and check how they're doing. Everyone, uh, at least in, 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 uh, in, in mainland Europe, um, is, is in confinement. So pick up the phone or get, get in touch with people Try to introduce yourself, check in on how they're doing, and uh, and network as much as uh, as possible. Understand that, for example, my guess is maybe not right now, this second, but down the line, since we're going to have a very charged event calendar with with events being uh, either cancelled or rescheduled. Uh, make sure that you're on top of what might be coming up, you know, and these, these operational roles within events are going to become uh, more and more needed. So that's probably an area where I would guess uh, there's going to be some needs. And for the moment, I mean, it's, I think, one of the, one of the key sectors and key skills that you can hone in is, is develop yourself on the digital side. You know, that's, that's, it's a good time to, to maybe pick up so many free classes are out there now on offer, especially now some, some really great stuff has been put out by, by organizations is, is honing on those skills so that, uh, so that when things move a little bit faster, you're, you're ready to respond. Well, I'm, I'm doing exactly that. So I'm trying to good. <laughs> learn good. how to you're, manage you're on top of it. Uh, there's plenty that is, can still go wrong. So let's hope it, uh, it doesn't as, uh, as well. As, as I'm learning uh, as, as we go along. Uh, what about uh, esports? I mean, people think of esports that is um, a great time and a great opportunity for them. You have many uh, traditional sports now more than ever uh, looking at uh, esports e platform. Uh, I know that SRI work uh, with a few mandates uh, with esports. 
not you uh, in, in particular, but uh, what can you tell us about that area specifically? Oh, by the way, just before before you, you answer that, so I see that we have um, already a good number of people watching us live. So if anyone would like to uh, post any question in the comments, we're tracking it and we'll ask uh, Joris uh, at the end. Esports, Joris. Great. Uh, so yeah, as you said, I'm. So my, my I don't uh, focus in particular on esports. Uh, I, I know I know the space to to an extent just because I, I stay close to to my colleagues that that work with within that area. But uh, it's been a, a booming um, a booming uh, industry for for many many years, and and we identified fairly early that we needed to have a real concentration concentration there. Um, I think there is a misconception at the moment, uh, a little bit on, on esports, thinking that, well, since um, sort of live sports or live physical sports are uh, all on uh, on hold, that, that esports is, you know, booming and that it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for them. There is opportunity. I think you can build a lot of goodwill. You can see what Twitch is doing, for example, in terms of, um, in terms of providing their platforms to, to, to show various types of, uh, of, of, uh, of gaming competitions. Um, but esports is also depending on, on live sports and, and physical attendance. I mean, these events are, are, are absolutely massive and, and, and very important to them. Um, so I think there is opportunity there for sure, uh, because it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's fully digital across, across many functions. Uh, but just like everyone else, there is there is some some downturn there, and there is a there is a slope. Uh, but I think in general, if if we're if we're gearing advice to to future graduates, recent graduates, or, or ones that are about to, or, or ones that are really now finishing their programs, that's that's a space that that I would highly recommend looking into because it's a great uh, a great entry point. It's a very passionate uh, work base, and they're very very much in line with the current times. Cool. So apart from esports, then mm -hmm. that, um, you just uh, mentioned that you find it very relevant. You recommend people look into it. Um, as you know, I work very closely with the the FIFA Masters. Uh, you're going to speak with them uh, in a short time as well. Uh, but also, we have uh, we collaborate to several other courses that uh, will be joining us uh, at the virtual job fair that we're organizing. We, because of the pandemic, had to turn the I Work in Sport Job Fair that annually happens here in Lausanne uh, into a virtual fair. So if people want some more information, it's iworkinsport.com. You will find uh, everything there. But anyway, you have um, a great number of people that are doing the, their master's, are about to, to graduate. What advice you would uh, give them now? For people that are about to graduate, no. they are about to graduate into the job market, probably in the worst time ever. Uh, is there anything that uh, they could do or should do? Network. <laughs> it's network, network, network. You know, and and I don't mean and I know it's 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 very it's very buzzy. It's very uh, it sounds like such a such a cliched answer, but truthfully, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it's the the more conversations you have, firstly. You, it's going to inspire you a lot more to figure out what you want to do because I think we've all been in that in that space where you finish school or whatever and you're just thinking, okay, oh I don't really know what direction I want to go into. I just know I want to work in sports. Well, since now times are a little bit slower, try and define that a little bit more. Try and think, okay, well, where specifically within sports do I uh, do I see I can bring added value? Am I am I very you know? Uh, data lit literate, uh, because then it's, do I target sort of, do I find out who's working for federations, agencies, rights holders within the IT departments, and then try to connect with these people and try to, you know, ask them for a phone call just to, just to pick their brains. And the way to do that, unfortunately, for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable because people don't like to bother others, but you have to bother people every now and then. Uh, and the most active ones are usually the ones that find the most success. So that would be, that would be my advice. The way I always put it is sort of approach it um, sort of like a job. So maybe in the morning when you're having your coffee, you're getting your day started, that's when you do your online applications where you're competing with hundreds if not thousands of other people, but just do them. You're in front of a computer screen. It's not exactly, it's not the most mentally engaging um, 
piece, but it's important to do. And then as the day progresses, while well, you do your slightly more uh, complicated and involved work, you know, and that's, you know, using LinkedIn, it's a good platform uh, and just try to engage with people, try to try to find people's emails and phone numbers, and then just try to, to engage them in a conversation. Uh, that's that's really that's really the most important. Um, and then I, well, when you asked me about CVs, because I believe you wanted to go over that, I, I can I can speak to how to use that to stand out as well uh, okay. when you're applying let's, for work. Let's uh, talk about that uh, right now. Then, so sure. how you know at, at your work, how does someone get noticed? How so? Yeah, so you... someone will get noticed. Uh, someone will get noticed by just showing that they've put care into their application and, and their CV. So if you're applying for uh, a retail marketing job, uh, make sure that your CV is adapted to that job. So where you believe you have transferable skills, make sure that that's being spoken to within within your CV and your cover letter. Uh, don't don't have the same CV for a digital manager than you would for, for a, marketing, a retail marketing job. Uh, a lot of a lot of recent graduates will have had such broad degrees that they'll see themselves in so many different positions, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but just make sure that you adapt your CV to the job description. The clues are in there. The the wording is there. So just uh, just make sure you respond to that. That at least I don't know. For me, for example, when I'm evaluating a CV, I'm reviewing a CV. It's one of the things you mentioned. How do you get noticed? Well, if I know if I can see somebody has clearly just used the same CV and it's it's really not related to a specific role, then I'm I'm going to know already that there hasn't been much, been much care put into this application. Uh, so these little things can can go a long way. Things like uh, people ask. Uh... Do I add a picture to the CV? Uh, is that one page, multiple pages? Yeah. Are they really relevant or really depends? On yeah. So there is, I, that's probably where I get the most pushback uh, whenever I'm asked this question and I answer it. Um, so I'll, for, for me, for example, when I'm expecting a CV from a candidate, if, if I'm going to put them forward for, for a position, um, a one pager usually is not going to cut it. Uh, it's great to have an attention getter and, and so on, but if you if your CV can go, can can go into two or three pages because you've got enough content to put in there and you've you've got enough to say, then go ahead and do that. Don't don't try and cram everything onto one page because at university they told you it needs to be one page because I forget what the the cliche is is people's attention span to look over a CV is fifteen seconds. Uh, for me. The, the 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 content of it is is extremely important so it's fine if it goes into two or three pages um and in terms of the picture i, I can't speak with any authority uh on this different cultures do it differently uh some of them are very big on putting their pictures on some of them uh do not allow it uh just for fair recruitments mm -hmm. um i tend not to include it uh but then at the same time like i said it's it's your, your best judgment. Just make sure if you're going to use a picture, it's a, clearly a professional photo. Okay, we have a few questions coming in. Uh, sure. Yatin Merta, uh, I hope I said his or her name uh, correctly, wants to know since uh, actually, what's the importance um, of a postgraduate course uh, into sports? So, as, as we know, we work a lot with uh, people doing masters in sports. I suppose there's certainly a value to it, but does it vary according to, to the position or what would you say? Yeah. So when you're looking at the TV, how much, I mean, does it make a difference for you? Yeah. So I have to say for, for me specifically, and I, I want to make sure I put this caveat out there. The, the roles that we're recruiting for usually are not sort of entry level positions. So yeah. your, your, professional experience is what matters the most. Um, so the education piece is less important. It's it's good to have had education, it's less important. So that that's a disclaimer on, on how we evaluate things just because of the nature of our business. Now, if, if, we're if I'm talking entry level, for example, and again, this would be my sort of my best advice, is you can do an MBA for sure. MBAs are, are um, are, are valuable, not not just because of how they look on the CV, but because of, of what they're going to teach you, to be honest. They're, they're going to teach you, you know, to be uh, to be pretty skilled across, you know, 
finance management, project management, uh, even HR, uh, depending on the on the degree. Uh, what I can what the way I would sort of answer that question is if you've got an idea of where you want to go into and uh, and that's quite clear to you, then do something that's a bit more technical and a bit more specific as far as your studies are concerned. Because then for that, for example, if you're going into, I don't know, if you if you're going into a design role, having the, the education piece and uh, and the training experience is, is going to go a long way into into having you progress to, to an interview stage at least. If so, if we're talking about then more senior positions, so let's say someone in their uh, late thirties or, or early forties that never worked in the sport industry before, but has a passion for it, have a solid career um, somewhere else, would like to make a transition. Do you have any 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 advice? Yeah, I mean, just. Uh, Go ahead and apply just make sure figure figure out for yourself what the transferable skills are right so if you've um if you've worked in fnc if fmcg excuse me throughout your whole career uh within a procurement role for example uh, then figure out okay where in sports is is that going to most likely uh be of use you know so do i get closer to sport by working for I don't know, uh, a Ralph Lauren, a, a Nike and Adidas within a procurement department. And then that allows me to sort of already get a foot in the door and then internally see if other positions come up, if your ultimate goal is to work in sponsorship. Um, it's that's, that's really, that's really the, the key is identifying where that next natural step is, is going to be, uh, because it's, it's going to be very, very, very challenging to go from one area to an entirely different one because it's a new passion that you found. Um, it is it is doable. It's not impossible, but it's very challenging. And if that's your aim, for me, my my the best way you can do it is through again through networking and getting involved in sort of entering that circle so that uh, so that maybe you can find a different entry point. Cool. Um... Shivam Singh has a question that is very similar to what I was about to ask uh, anyway. So what are some of the core skills recruiters in sports um, are looking for? The, in, so, or, 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 or we can say, what are the skills that you would say are more, more on demand nowadays? Yeah, so more in demand, I, I can I can speak to that. So for the the digital and tech uh, piece is is very interesting. Um, so that I know that's quite broad because digital can be anything from from data to design. Um, but understanding the understanding data and being able to sort of make sense of it, uh, package it nicely so that it can be then, uh, you know, sold on to a sponsor or, 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 or used just for market intelligence and whatnot, that's going to go a long way. Um, a lot of different organizations are really trying to develop their IT department. And, and that's one of the common misconceptions, I think, is that people think IT, they think, you know, uh, in front of a computer, you know, Java developers and whatnot. Uh, there is a lot more to it than that, and that data literacy is extremely, extremely important. Okay, okay. Well, there's some uh, more questions uh, coming in. If we can, go I see. To I'll, I'd like to answer um, Alexandra's uh, Alexandr Diaz's question on uh, yes, preparing for video interviews because I think it's um, it's quite apropos uh, of the moment. Yeah. So. My advice on uh, online interviews is you need to have as little distraction around you as possible. So you can you can have, you know, if you're going to be on video, have a very light background. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just a white wall. It can have like a shelf or some stuff, but just not too busy because depending on who you might interview with, if somebody is a little bit scatterbrained, they're going to try to figure out what books you've got. Uh, written above your head to see if they've read them before or something like that. And they're not going to be paying attention to you as much as they should be. Um, mm -hmm. Another one, and I know this always sounds a little bit uh, ridiculous, but that's just my my personal view on it. You're in the comfort of your home, usually before a video interview. So you've had time to make sure that you know, you're know you quenched, you're well-fed, you're in the right mindset. You've not had to, to stress about being stuck in a 
in a, in a traffic jam on your way to an interview, you don't need to, you know, okay, do I, who do I go to, to call them up? You don't need to deal with any of that. It's literally that you, you can't be late firstly. So don't be late for an online interview. And for example, I would say if it's going to be a 30 to 45 minutes, even an hour interview, you can probably do without water for an hour. So just make sure you've drank your water before the interview. Then when the video interview starts, just be focused on only that. Um, and then lastly, but that goes for any interview, and that's the single most important thing is have questions ready. Um, if you if you don't have questions ready, it just shows you've not done enough research. Uh, there's no way for somebody to answer all your questions in just a natural interview. So at the end, two, three questions to ask, it's a great way to intimate interest uh, and, and really, really is important and will get you a lot of goodwill from the person that's interviewing. you. Great, uh, good advice, good question. Um, so a few others that are uh, coming up, mm -hmm. uh, Emil Shukurov, uh, he would like to know uh, about the salary expectations. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose that uh, many, uh, for many positions you have to give your salary expectations. Is there any advice of sort of how to do that? Mm -hmm. and, I, I, to be honest, don't really understand why people uh, ask that. So they should have a salary range and negotiate uh, on that. And yeah, uh, yeah. So sa salary conversations is always a little bit of a of a of a hairy one because, firstly, different countries will have different rules uh, about what you are and aren't allowed to ask. Uh, some countries you can't ask when somebody what somebody is making. Some countries you can. Uh, some countries you can't ask what somebody is expecting even uh, you're supposed to volunteer that information so my advice unfortunately is not uh, I'm not going to give you a, a great big uh, secret it's to your research so if uh, if you're applying for a job uh, that's you know where you've got five years experience and it's in Switzerland uh, and you don't really know what the salaries are like in Switzerland well hopefully you've got somebody who you can call and reach out to uh, in Switzerland, we can give you a lay of the land. Otherwise, do the research online to figure out what salary ranges make, uh, make sense. Generally speaking, I will say, um, if you've got just a great profile for a role and the salary range that you've indicated is not exactly within the range that they're looking for, to probably still have a conversation with you. And then that conversation will be had. If there is no way to budge around the salary, then Yes, it, it can end it short because ultimately if they can't pay what you're looking for, then, then they can't. Um, yeah. But it's it's not necessarily going to be the biggest barrier because people will still be interested and still want to know if you're willing to do what you do for a little bit less. Great. Uh, Daniel Dos Santos, uh, University of Dayton. Hello, uh, Daniel. Uh, do companies look at what candidates do in terms of social responsibility, volunteering, helping, etc.? Yeah, I think that's that's um, it's it's an important one to to include. Um, I do believe because on even on the off chance that somebody uh, might be involved in the same type of organization that you're involved in, I think it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely a good um, a good added uh, bit to, to 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 promote and and have. Just make sure again, you know, in in your volunteering and your you know, when you're telling these stories, just make sure that you're clear on to why you're doing it. If it's from for philanthropic uh, endeavors, then that's absolutely fine. Be clear on that. If you think that it's going to help you develop a specific skills that uh, tangible skill that's going to be useful into a, into a job, then 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 make sure that you're able to explain why and how. All right. Um, a question from Michele Tiozzo. Hi, Michele. Um, Good morning. So how much recruiters check the social media accounts of candidates during the recruitment process? Okay, LinkedIn, but um, do they actually go to their Facebook or others, uh, more personal and social media? No. Uh, so LinkedIn, for sure, we, we use and then look over uh, and, and so will clients. Um, I don't. I personally don't tend to to go into some some crazy deep dives onto people's uh, Facebook, Twitters, and Instagrams. Um, it can be done. Uh, so I mean, I, I would say I would say err with caution. You know, if you're especially if you're looking for work, then you know maybe your pro either set your profiles on private. Um, you know, especially Facebook, uh, you can you know 
set that to, to private. If you don't want it to be private, then just have a look at what pictures you've got up there and, uh, you know, use your best, uh, your best judgment as to what's appropriate and what's not. Uh, and then with regards to Twitter, I mean, that's, you know, it's your prerogative. If, um, if you feel, if you feel very strongly on certain topics and, and you like to, to be engaged on Twitter, then, then more power to you. That's, that's within your right. Um, but you can control how that's going to be evaluated by somebody else. Uh, so it's a, it's a conversation you need to have with yourself on, on to what you want, uh, there to be av available to the public and what you don't and accept, um, what the ramifications might be. Okay, uh, Krishna Ramesh um, asks, according to you, uh, to succeed in a job in a sport industry in Europe, uh, what would you would you recommend? Uh, sports uh, management, a master in sports management, or a more let's say classical MBA? It, it's a wash for me. It 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 doesn't make much of a difference. I mean, MBAs, I guess, are a little bit more um, highly regarded, but for this, it's going to depend the institution you get it from. Uh, but really, you need to figure out what's going to be most engaging for you, what's going to teach you the most, because those are then the tools that you're going to use to go to the job market and that you're going to use to, to find work. So figure out what's important to you and what skills you want to hone in and then there will be there will be job opportunities on the back of those skills oh Jorge's we just passed uh, 30 minutes mark do you have another five minutes or so for a sure. more question yeah yeah no problem just um, so we can uh, Benedict Pater asks uh, about your thoughts on sports blogs as a way of getting uh, noticed um, really yeah uh, so blo blogs are interesting. Um, I think we I, I don't do, we don't do too much work um, in terms of placing journalists and freelance and so on. Uh, but I can tell you for sure that uh, that you know loads of organizations will use freelancers for their work um, and freelancers across various different languages. So the more you can work and the more you can write and the more you can do on your blog. Um, the, well, firstly, it's gonna it's gonna help you develop your your journalistic skills uh, and your writing skills. Uh, just try and be as unique as possible and, and stand out uh, through your writing, and then and then you know make use of social media platforms to make sure that you know your work is being put out there and, and that it's gaining traction. And then on the back of it, figure out you know okay, so what uh, you know what websites or what uh, publications uh, are most in line with, with what I write. So, you know, is it, is it a place like the ringer? Is it a place like, uh, or is it something that the Bundesliga might be interested in and then try to figure out uh, who you can reach out to over there and just say, Hey, have a look at wrote this article on this and then send your link and, and hopefully somebody will pick it up. And uh, same, and, same uh, for podcasting. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, probably the same, I, I suppose the same rationale. Yeah, I don't know. Podcasting is a uh, is a mixed bag. I mean, I've been you know listening to podcasts for years and years and years, uh, where there were very few, and now there's just so many. Uh, so I don't I don't really know how you know the best way to to stand out with regards to to podcasting. I mean, I think as always, it's having a un unique views are always the best ways to. To stand out, uh, I think writing is probably a little bit less challenging to stand out than podcasting because it requires le less effort to, to 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 click on an article rather than download a podcast. But I don't, I, I can't speak to podcasting too much. All right. Well, talk, talking about podcasting, I'm, I'm going to actually to to promote a Sportworks uh, podcast. That's where. Uh, I sit and we have an office there with the uh, CIS and uh, I work in sport has a, a desk there with them as well. So they're doing a, s a series of podcasts. So here's the, the promotion. I will be talking with them probably uh, next week. I think it's next week. Sorry, Tachi. Um, also, one that I would like to recommend is one called Swing It Like uh, Backhand by Caroline uh, Gerega. So ch check it out. And we'll probably be posting this as um, as a podcast uh, in the very near future too. It's another study on digital that I I need to to do. Um, listen, I we have still a few more questions, but um, we're think 
you know, running out of time. I will send you uh, the questions or you can maybe go to, to the comments on, on our YouTube and Facebook if you'd like to, to reply to them. And let me just uh, thank you uh, for your participation. If you'd like to say anything else, it's the uh, floor is yours. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for, for your time, Joao. I think it's uh, always, always happy to, to answer these questions. I mean, just the last, uh, the last parting bit of advice, just because I see it from the questions on, you know, how to get into the industry and this and that, you need, you need to figure out where you want to, where you want to go. The more specific you can get as far as, uh, your, the entry point you're looking for, uh, the better, uh, your chances are and, and the more targeted your research is going to be. Uh, that, that really is for me the, the most important part. And if you want to work in sports, just remember you're working weekends. Uh, and that's that's not that's not as fun. So that's one of the one of the realities there. No, he's, sorry. So b before we actually go, there's a, one more that it's a ch difficult question, but I think you hear that a lot. Since mm -hmm. I, I hear that a lot, I would like to to ask you uh, from Rijul Sharda, uh, any advice for non-Europeans? So I suppose that he means for people that uh, wants to work here. Yeah, give um, they have to go the extra mile because of the permit. Yeah, I mean the, the visa the visa question is difficult. Uh, some countries are a lot more relaxed than others. Uh, again, there is no there is no magic way to do it. I think a lot of the it's then targeting positions where where whatever territory, whatever geography you come from is uh, is being uh, is necessary. Then it's it's going for jobs like this. So whether that's you know a specific language requirement uh, or whether that's having you know geographical expertise, uh, that's that that's really how you're going to have the best chances. Otherwise, you just have to. Sort of put up with the frustrations uh, and just and just keep keep hammering away. There's no there's no secret recipe for it. Okay, listen. Thank you so much. Uh, My pleasure. For, your time, for for being here with us. Um, just uh, to let everybody know that uh, next week we'll do it the same day. We'll be later. We'll be at six o'clock um, European time. Um, with Patrick Books from uh, Mercury Urval. So I hope to see you all there. And uh, Joris, uh, thank you again. My and pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll, we'll keep this uh, conversation going. Sounds thank good. You. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye.